Hi, I'm Caleb. I'm going to show you a little prototype I made about six years ago. What it is, is a prototype of a 3D game on a field programmable gate array. FP uh, an FPGA. And you can see that little chip there is the FPGA. It's fairly small and underpowered, especially by today's standards, but it gets the job done. So this is just a prototyping board here, and you can see it has power hooked up, and this little guy right here is VGA output. And if I flip it on, you can see that it turns on, and we have a little monitor set up here. Get to the right input, it's on DVI right now. Now it's on VGA, and you can see the game pops up. It's a 3D first-person maze game. And if I use the buttons here on the prototyping board, see we have up, left, right, and down. Those correspond to forward, turn left, turn right, and go backwards. So, see here if I press the forward button, I go forward and walk along the maze. Now what makes this project interesting despite its low resolution, is that the video card here is coded from scratch. Everything I made is in VHDL to do the rasterization, and there's a little bit of code to do the transforms on the embedded PowerPC that's here on the FPGA. There are pretty extreme constraints on this in that the FPGA only has about 30,000 logic cells, and there's only about 300 kilobytes of memory available. And that's memory that's shared between the PowerPC for both instructions and data and for the video card, which, or, well, the video system, which in this case has to store the pixel buffer, actually two of them. This one is double buffered, depth buffer, and texture information, which is Actually, the textures could have a lot more fidelity with just a little bit of memory. So that was one of the extreme constraints here. So we can walk along the maze, take a look. There's collision in. There's a horribly pixelated little ghost. We'll get out of the way here. There's another one. Let's go exploring. Let's see what's down here. There's the end of the maze right there. So. I hope you found this interesting. It's definitely an interesting challenge to make this work, especially the depth correct interpolation. That's a pretty major piece when you're working in 3D that's often gloss over. Another little interesting fact is that there's no floating point operations going on here. All this that you're seeing here is just enter operations. All right. Thanks for watching and be sure to leave a comment.